don't just carry on as you're doing. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is listen to what has been said here. Make changes in your diet. Exclude the items that you just said. What were they? Seed oils? Uh, yeah, seed oils, grains. industrial grains, and sugar. And sugar. Yeah. It's the only really thing. three things that you need to focus on. Yeah, but they're in a lot of shit. Canoil oil. oil. <laughs> Basically everything. <laughs> they're in almost everything. So you need it's to insane. actually kind of <laughs> you almost just have to go to the farmer's market and like yeah no yeah that yeah i go on google maps and uh just look up yeah farm farm stand farm farmer's market uh butcher like where you can get good meat getting high mm. quality meat is huge uh get high quality eggs tons of people have chickens all around where you live i'm sure yeah, they're get everywhere. their eggs there's still a lot of farms out there uh and- yeah exactly there's lots. Yeah. There's go there's straight to the farmers to get your food. There's a guy who sells eggs, five bucks a box, just down the road from me. And if you're willing to drive a little bit more in the sticks, they'll sell them to you for three fifty a box. It's like, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So I realized that, you know, never in my life have I gone even more than a few days without eating grains, mm. which is totally novel for the, for human side. And when you think about it really from a first principles, evolutionary standpoint perspective here, the only food that would be consistent year round would be animals. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I I haven't researched this big time, but I'm thinking just from what I see in like nature, like simply plants, mushrooms, you know, berries, nuts, they're just yeah. not there year round. Yeah. What right? do you eat in the winter? Like what else can you actually eat in the you winter? You got to eat the animals. Pretty much. Yeah. And then whatever you've been able to preserve from the fall, like from the harvest, right? You, you mm-hmm. preserve as much food as you can, like via drying it out and salting it. But yeah, man, you got to eat the animals. And so it's amazing that um, I'm not sure. I mean, you have experience with being vegetarian and vegan. It, it didn't go great. Well, I won't say it didn't go great. I will say eventually there were, it presented issues. Initially, it was a huge improvement. I'll just kind of recount right. this initially. So I went away to Costa Rica to this initial retreat when I was 28. My diet wasn't really great. I just pretty much had like a whatever thing, liked eating a lot of meat previous to that. But I went and ate just really good organic vegetarian food. Well, let's just specify time. low quality meat, right? It was, yeah, it was low quality meat. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And I went and ate this good vegetarian stuff every meal for a week. And after that, I went out to eat with my parents and I got this low quality meat chicken burger at a restaurant and I ate it and I felt like I needed to pass out. Like I literally felt myself go like, Ugh, and I like, oh, no. like <laughs> exhausted. I just like it took the wind out of me eating that chicken burger. And it was really just like terrible white bread, chicken burger in the middle, no vegetable. And I was like, that was it. But I just felt that experience. And I was like, wow, I never noticed that this is kind of probably the feeling that I'm always getting from this stuff, but less pronounced. And I was like, maybe there's something to this. And then eight months later, when I became a Kundalini yoga teacher, they strongly encouraged us. In fact, they even tried to get us to sign a contract to say that we would be vegetarian in upholding like the teachings of Kundalini yoga, because for reasons that they think, I don't know that's necessarily this is the thought of everyone involved, but there's kind of this, you know, concept that I mentioned earlier, the cells of whatever, whatever we're eating is becoming the cells of our body. And even on a vibrational level, we should be careful about what that is. And eating animals that were killed in horrific circumstances or live their mm. whole life in a factory farm is like, you probably don't want that becoming you. There's uh, you know, research I just read by this MIT scientist who, you know, supports that hypothesis in a way. Mm-hmm. She says that these cows right before, <laughs> right before they're slaughtered, like they fucking know. Yeah. And they're terrified. Oh, yeah. And it releases all these hormones and it basically like poisons their blood and and ruins the meat. And then you get to eat that. And then that's what you're eating. You're eating like poisoned, terrified meat. (laughs) And it's like, you wonder why people have so many people have anxiety. It's like, because you're (laughs) eating the cells of an anxious, like just killed thing. But I do want to just wrap up what I was talking about before, which is progression of vegetarianism. Three years of vegetarian and switched into vegan for three years. I thought it was great at the time. But <laughs> in hindsight, I was slowly becoming emaciated and you could start to see my ribs and I was oh, losing yeah. a lot of muscle mass. I also wasn't act, like lifting as much as I used to, like that's a piece of it. But uh, ultimately, uh, I met my naturopathic doctor girlfriend and she took one look at me and was like, you need to eat meat uh, right away. <laughs> and I did. I started including like, like some eggs and my body was like 
hungry for those eggs when I ate those eggs. That oh, first I time. bet, dude. Like I ate a hard boiled egg and my body was like, we need more. We need more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, eggs are a lifeline for, for vegans. I suppose they're not supposed to eat eggs, but I think they have to. Well, yeah, yeah. I know some people are are vegetarian with eggs and some people are vegan with eggs, but yeah. 